Ajay is a graduate from Elite School of Optometry and postgraduate from Lotus College of Optometry. He is a lifetime fellow of International Association of Contact Lens Educators. I have known Ajay for more than 30 years and he is one of the greatest but and unsung heroes in Indian optometry today. It's my honor to moderate Ajay's talk. Over to you, Ajay. Well, thank you very much, Aditya, uh, for this nice and brief int introduction from you. Uh, hello, everybody. I would first like to thank Shankar Eye Foundation for giving me this opportunity to share and discuss a little bit I know about dispensing spectacles. I had started my own practice in the year 1993. And at that time, my interest was to establish a complete eye care center along with contact lens dispensing. I did not pay much attention to dispensing of spectacles, but with time, I realized complete eye, uh, I realized that complete eye examination is not enough without dispensing skills and problem solving related to spectacles. There are a lot of challenges that come our way to make you realize a good spectacle dispensing is a part of optometry practice. I recall that an ophthalmologist once told us in the class, I may be a good surgeon, but it is no use if I'm unable to do a good refraction and write down the correct prescription. After all, they have come to us for good eyesight or the vision. Similarly, I would say that refraction alone is not enough by an optometrist. You will have to provide the person a comfortable spectacles and a good vision. So with regards to troubleshooting, I was quite curious to know uh, what troubleshooting actually meant. And I Googled it out and this is what Wiki had to say. Second, yeah. Troubleshooting is a form of problem solving. It is, I'm masking it here. It's a, a part of pro problem solving. It is a logical systematic search for the source of a problem in order to solve it and make the product or a process operational again. Symptoms are needed to identify the troubleshooting. One sec, I want this out, done. So when we have trouble with spectacles dispense, there are two characters in the picture. One is your customer and the second is your optician. The customer is usually frustrated, very few are actually very calm. And the optician is of course worried and telling himself, what have I gone wrong with? So let's actually try and understand a few troubleshooting cases and see how it needs to be managed. Let's start with this case one. A 48 years male marketing executive came in wearing single vision prescription glasses and the power was minus 125 spherical and minus 350 spherical. Here I would just like to tell my audience, if you have a pen and paper, please start making a note because these figures are something that you would probably want to look back and forth again. Okay, he brings in a prescription which reads minus 1.5 right eye and minus four diopterospherical left eye with an addition, with a slightly different addition of 1.5 and 175. And the examination was done at 40 centimeter distance for near, he was able to read N6. On the prescription, he had the comments written saying that flat top bifocals. And since he chose a, a rimless frame, we had considered to give him a polycarbonate lenses. So orders were taken and then on the dispensing visit, the person's distance vision, what he had to comment was distance vision is good, but near is not so comfortable. The optician, which is us, he's as usual will say, 
that will take some time to settle. And as you're a first time bifocal wearer, it'll take some time for you to understand the movements and adapt to it. So three days later, the customer came back complaining again, saying that at the time of reading, I see double vision or it's a ghosting of images, one above the other while reading. And he says, I prefer to take it off while I'm reading. The optician now gets a little worried and saying, where have I gone wrong? So what may be the problem with this particular case? It could, could it be no anti-reflection coating? Is it the different ad or is it the prismatic effect? Segment height, which could be probably incorrect or the customer is finding an excuse to return it. The last one sounds very weird, but yes, there are cases that we do come across. Anyways, the answer to this is of course, it is the prismatic effect which is causing the problem. So let's try and understand how this is happening. So in this particular case, uh, wherein we have the right eye with a 1.5 spherical and left eye with a four spherical, let's say if from the optic center, the eye looks down by about a centimeter. And if you apply the Prentiss rule, the prismatic effect at that point, which we have shown here in the red cross mark will be approximately about 1.5 prism diopters base down. And on the left eye, it would be about four prism base down. So this difference is what actually causes a, a double vision. It is from the main lens itself, okay? Vertical difference of let's say about one prism in the down gaze, which will actually result in an intolerance and causing a little bit of a problem of double vision. Now let's take for this particular case with a D bifocal or a flat top bifocal that we have dispensed. The main lens is giving you a one and a half prisms on the right eye and on the left eye, it's giving you a one and four prism uh, uh, diopters based down. But it, does the segment have any role to play? Well, from the segment top to the near vision point, which is just about 0.5 centimeters. And if you just work that out, it will have only about 0.75 prism based down. And on the other eye, it will have about 0.87 prism based down, which is getting added up again onto your main lens prismatic effect. But since the prismatic effect caused by the segment alone is very negligible and it is more or less the same, it is not the segments which are actually inducing the, the problem onto the person's diplopia. The cause is basically from the main lens. Now what you need, if it is, you need to find a solution for the person. What you need to do is of course, educate the person by demonstrating to him. Now, how would you demonstrate? You just have to take a single line, probably an N8 print size and give it to him and advise him to read from the lower portion of his spectacles, not with a bifocal, but going back to his previous glasses itself. If you advise him to read from the lower portion of his spectacles, even there, he would begin to experience a slight bit of a prismatic effect or a double vision. Your visual system is so, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's a, it becomes more of a reflex for a person to generally drop his chin down to read the smaller prints or any kind of prints, but he would not look from the lower portion of his single vision spectacles. That's what you need to try and educate to him by demonstrating and then now you have to find a solution for this problem. So you go ahead and say, look, I can give you options as to how I can solve this problem. To understand this, you need to have a good idea about his occupation and also about his lifestyle. Knowing these, you can probably advise to the person about the 
options he has. Now let's take a simple example in this case. If the occupation happens to be a cashier in a bank, his options can be limited only to progressive ad lenses. Of course, if it's a polycarbonate, again, with the anti-reflection coating, that's again an option for him, or a monovision spectacles. But if the person is as working as a driver or an IT professional, I would still say a separate pair of glasses would work the best because it gives them a better binocularity. And the second time, second types is going to be about his lifestyle. If he's active in indoor sports or into gardening, those kind of activities also seems to be his other hobbies. Then you could probably suggest to him only progressive ad lenses, monovision uh, spectacles again. So in that case, what I would like to go tell you is that in such cases where there is an isometropic correction, it would be wise to think twice before you go ahead and advise the person uh, accordingly and not just generally go ahead and give them bifocals because it is going to give rise to uh, double vision uh, from the reading segments or from the reading portion. Let's go on to the second case. This was a case which I had dealt with in the recent, just about a couple of weeks ago. A 20 year old female a student who came in with uh, complaints of eye strain. So her previous glass prescription was a minus 175 spherical with minus 250 at an axis of 170. And the left eye had a minus 225 with minus three at 175 axis. This was a prescription taken in 2018. That time I had processed the glasses and I had given her a 1.56 index Titus lenses as the parents were saying that she's very clumsy, doesn't care much for her glasses. So she got in a new prescription, which was processed again elsewhere this time and put it across to me saying that this is my new prescription, but my glasses are not very comfortable. This is going to be a minus 225. The difference happens to be just a minus 0.5 spherical increase. And in the left eye, a 0.5 spherical increase and also a tiny 0.25 cylinder with a five degree change in the axis. What was dispensed there was a 1.6 chrysal sapphire. So, after using it for about three days, she said, there's a lot of eye strain and I'm unable to tolerate these glasses for even 15 minutes. She also complained to the doctor saying that vision is good with the new glasses, but I am comfortable with the old ones. And she continued to explain to the doctor where she had got it examined. The optician outside that is his own in his own clinic the optician outside didn't take any measurements, but I remember my previous opticians made note of a few measurements. Now, they are stressing a point, the point saying that, look, there's something wrong with these glasses. And I think the optician outside has goofed up a bit. So that's what they were actually trying to stress upon. But then let's see what could be the problem again. The doctor didn't know what had to be done. And that's when he had referred that case to me. This, the problems that if you have to jot it down, it could be a centration issue is what we checked and it happened to be fine. Was it the anti-reflection coating earlier I had given without the anti-reflection coating and now it was with the anti-reflection coating? Was it the base curve of the spectacle lenses? Was it the change in the axes or was it an over refraction or is it because of the change in the refractive index? We have to try and see what generally happens with any changes that you've made. So you have to try and reason it out. Well, in this case, I, through my own experience, I would say it is because of the base curve. Uh, I checked the base curve of the old lenses and I also happened to check the base curve of the new ones. And there was a lot of difference. Please note that the base curve of a finished single vision lenses 
are usually flatter and thinner to make the lenses cosmetically more appealing. And if you were to do it with the processing, the software would calculate the best form aspheric design, which will minimize the adverse effects such as what she expressed saying that I strain and I'm not at all comfortable. I'm like craving to get rid of my glasses, put my old glasses back, which is so much more comfortable, though my vision is kind of slightly blurred. So base curve generally gives these kind of or problems and that's what the, the customer is likely to express. Let's go on to the case, third case. This is of course a progressive lens once. Uh, again, this is a case which was dispensed by a practitioner close by or an optician close by. It was a 57, 47 year old female lawyer by profession. He dispensed those glasses and that was her second pair of uh, progressive spectacles. And he had spoken a little bit about the design upgrade. The prescription read minus one spherical with minus 175 cylinder, 90 with 66 vision and 175, 150 cylinder at 90. Addition in both the eyes was 150 spherical and she was very comfortable reading the N5 prints. Working distance as required was about 40 to 50 centimeter range was what was given to them. And that's what the prescription read. On the dispensing visit, as usual, as most of the opticians would do, the fitting cross was checked between the demonstration lens that the person would have used and versus the finished spectacle markings. Fitting cross on wearing the progressive spectacles was found to be just about one mm lower in front of the right eye. The optician didn't pay much attention to it. He just dispensed those glasses with a lot of confidence saying that, do not worry, you will adapt to them. She continued to use it and returned back in about say 10 days later, returned after visiting the ophthalmologists, advised by the doctor to go ahead and see the optician because the, what the opti ophthalmologists do is they put back the correction that they have prescribed on the trial frame and show it to them. And if the person is quite comfortable reading the distance and the near vision charts, the person says there's something wrong with the spectacle lenses, please go back to the optician and check with him what may be wrong. So as advised by the ophthalmologist, this patient came back to him and the optician uh, had to rectify before which he had to listen to her out. She says that I have to tilt my head a bit for clear vision and to have a wider zone of vision while reading. And you know, I have to read a lot in my profession. These are her words. I did not have this problem with my previous spectacles. That's again, something that she's stressing upon. So your upgrade of the spectacle lenses doesn't seem to have helped me and I've paid a little bit more. Indirectly, that's what she's trying to specify to him. As most of the opticians would do is, I'm unsure what the problem is because I, it looks to me that everything is fine, but please leave it with me. I shall have the optics checked to the laboratory. And if there is a problem, we'll try and rectify it. Which the optician did, he took it back and sent it back to the laboratory. And at the lab, the uh, person who does the fitting or the optometrist who is in charge did a little bit of adjustments of the nose pad that is narrowing of the nose pads just to lift or get the reading area more into the zone of comfort for the person. And he also increased the pantoscopic tilt hoping the problem would be solved. He called the optician called back the patient or the customer Give it over, give the glasses to her. And uh, on checking it, the person said, something is not right. My previous glasses definitely felt better. So once again, it was stressed upon saying that, look, my glasses don't feel very good. My previous glasses are absolutely fine, but there is something wrong. The optician did once again say, okay, I will try and get a new pair of lenses processed. 
please give me some more time. And that's when the optician came back to me. He said, sir, it's fine. I have sent it to the lab, but I still am curious to understand what is the problem with this pair of glasses. Please help me out. So when he got it to me and we had to try and see what, what is wrong with this pair of glasses. Well, just as a guesswork, was it the wrong design of the lenses for her profession? Was it the upgrade uh, expectations not met? Or is she finding excuses to get return and get a refund? Or is it none of the above? So we started to try and figure it out. The first thing that I did was the spectacles uh, was checked for power. First thing that we have to do. I know this guy did not know how to remark the pair of glasses. He just had to cross check on the marking that was left behind. So I had to remark the lenses and then check the prescription once again. What we found is on the right eye, it was off by about three degrees. And in the left eye, again, it was off by about two degrees. But this is within the normal acceptable range. So what we found here is the PD that he had marked was correct. And whatever measurement he had taken was absolutely fine. It was positioning in front of the pupil is what I understand. But on closer look, as you can see it here, this particular mark which I have on the left image for the left eye was slightly higher than the actual circle mark or the inscription inscribed mark where it should sit into the slot. What it is indicating to me is one is up and the other side is down. Similarly, even on the right eye, I found that the marking was slightly higher. And again, on this side, it was slightly lower. So the lenses that were fitted were not fitted precisely. There was a slight uh, rotation of the lens which is what was causing about three degrees shift on one side and another two degrees on the other side for which the reading zone kind of moved out a bit and he, she had to tilt her head a little bit to get a better comfortable vision. So this is what I had to point out to the person and say, look, the lenses are not precisely fit. If these are in absolute straight line. If the scribe marks, the circular scribe marks are in an absolute straight line, then this lady would not have this trouble of tilting her heads a bit. This is a very small actually rotation. Quite often I do get, just to adjust the lenses into a frame, they do quite a bit of rotation. And though we see that uh, the, uh, fitting crosses precisely in front of the pupil, but the lens is fitted with a little bit of a rotation. Here we were able to quickly pick it up as a fault when we checked on the lens meter saying that it's about three degrees and two degrees shift. But if it happens to be a spherical, again, the problem would be very similar. The person would have to rotate or tilt his head a little bit to actually read it a little bit more comfortable. Let's go on to the case number four. This is interesting, actually, in the recent times, which many people have been advertising about blue cut lenses. This is a 26 year old male. The occupation of this individual is he's a fine arts designer, works extensively on laptops and a bit of desk work with clothing material. That's all he had to express to us. And uh, this is on my follow-up visit is when we get to understand this. And his prescription was pretty simple of with minus 0.5 diopter spherical and a minus 0.75 with good vision. When he had come to our store, the store staff who have been uh, trained and encouraged to fit in the blue protect lenses and there's so much hype about the blue protect lenses the general questions by the sales staff when asked are, so do you use a laptop or a lot of mobile work, et cetera? So if it is a yes, then immediately they say that we have a new lens which protects the harmful blue light. So this is what was dispensed by our staff, of ARC blue protect lenses. 
And two weeks later, this gentleman comes back to me and came back to our store. And he expressed saying that when I'm trying to match colors, please note that he is from a, a textile industry or he has got to do a lot of work about uh, matching colors. So he said, when I'm trying to match colors for the textile manufacturing, I see a difference when I view through these glasses as against without them. And conveniently, my sales staff advised to consult me for what may be the problem. And yes, I had to take some time and educate this customer about what is happening with his blue protect glasses. So we start, of course, to explain about WebGoy and then in the sunlight, once one side of it is the UV uh, radiation and the other end of the spectrum happens to be the infrared spectrum. And what we also try to explain to them is about digital devices with LED screens emit high energy visible blue light, which affects the crystalline lens and the macula. So, what the person did outside at my store is that since you are exposed to a lot of LED screens, he is rightly advised to protect your eyes from these high energy visible blue light to make sure that your eyes are protected from these harmful radiations. But in turn, it has affected your uh, performance in the occupation and which is actually right. So what happens with this blue protect lenses is it kind of makes or brings in a slight yellowish tinge when you're looking at anything that is a little white. You could actually demonstrate to the person by just placing a white sheet of paper. Uh, better if it has a black print just for him to understand about the contrast. So put it out with a white sheet of paper and some printed matter and ask him to look through these lenses, he would see the background of that white sheet of paper being slightly yellowish. And without the glasses or with, without the, um, what do you call it, the, the blue protect feature in it. So if you were to look through those lenses, it would be absolutely white. So that is one of the proofs that this, uh, Blue protect lenses are actually filtering out the blue light, hence he's seeing it a little yellowish. So how do we solve this problem? In this particular case, I would say it's best that we allow the customer to decide. If he wishes to retain it or change it, I would say do it without troubling him. If he says, no, I just want an anti-reflection coating, please go ahead and respect his decision and give him a, a just the best of anti-reflection coating. And you'll probably have to go through a little bit of a loss with regards to the blue protect lenses. But these are cases which are fairly rare. You will not have many guys come in with, you know, who are into these kind of professions. So in this case, yes, the person opted for an anti-reflection coated lenses. And he says, since it's hindering my profession, I would like you to give me the best of anti-reflection coated lenses only. Well, the take home message from these four cases would be saying managing troubleshoots is best dealt with honesty. I would say you'll have to explain to them, make them understand so that um, they are satisfied. So here it is gonna be more of satisfying your customer and saying, look, I, I kind of, understand the problem, but these are your solutions. Like in the first case, though we knew the problem might come up, but it may not be in all the cases. Uh, it's still, we had to dispense the glasses according to what the prescription read, saying that we want you to wear in a flat top bifocal. So we gotta be honest, educate the person as much as we can but do not over-educate them as well. Okay, with this, I would like to take some questions if there are any. 
thank you ajay thanks for your time and a fantastic presentation i see one question over here from mr rahul gundecha yep he wants to know about uh, case number 3 was she comfortable after the rotation uh i don't know if she was comfortable after the rotation because this was reprocessed by the other person he had taken it back and then i know he got a different brand of lenses he says i'm going to shift the, from x brand to a y brand and get the lenses reprocessed and dispensed to her i didn't get a feedback from this person but from my experience i'll tell you it is for a spherical lenses which i did mention i don't have the the prescriptions precisely but even for spherical lenses i had a similar complaint and yes the problem was solved once i had got the lenses fitted or refitted to the precise alignment yes the person did appreciate it immediately for my case the spherical one and this is also got to me about a month month and a half ago so i didn't get a feedback from the optician who had come in with this problem i'm i'm 99% sure yes the problem would have definitely been solved otherwise you would have come back and told me once again thank you ajay i don't see any more questions but we'll wait for a while and sure. see if we get yeah we do uh, there's a question from uh, mr devaka mm -hmm. he has complimented you on your excellent presentation oh thank you he wants to know what type of bifocal design is advised in myopic and hypopic patients what type of Bifocal design, design for if if your myopic corrections well myopic from my experience it says hypopic yeah the preference seems to be most of the myopes prefer a flat top bifocals if at all you have to dispense a bifocal most of the bi uh, uh, bifocals preferred by myopes are a flat top and the hyperopes prefer it with uh, the cryptoc bifocals though it does have a little bit more of the jump effect in the cryptoc bifocals for some reasons through our experience it says people with hyperopia prefer the cryptoc bifocals and they are the ones who highlight too much about the line bothering them it's not the jump effect that bothers them so much but it is the line that bothers them the hyperopes express it more uh saying that the line the segment line bothers us more in the flat top bifocals i hope that answers devakar uh devakar if you have any more questions if you could uh, type it out yes. we'll uh, ask ajay ajay there's another question from mrs devakani suresh mm -hmm. <laughs> she has again complimented you on a great presentation now she has a long question i'll read it out to you can we make different refractive index uh, in this uh, lenses between the two eyes in case of anisometropia okay i'll split the questions so can okay. we make that uh different refractive index how does it help if it is just to bring in the cosmetic appearance yes it can be done but it has to be processed with the best form lens design in mind basically paying a little bit more attention on the base curve it shouldn't be too much of a difference between the right and left with regards to base curve but yes refractive indices different for the right and left is absolutely acceptable okay the next part of a question is what will be the effect of arc in such prescriptions arc in the different with, refractive indices yeah i don't think as long as it is as long as it is processed with the appropriate base curves the arc would shouldn't matter it should have the same effect because the transmittance arc is nothing but boosting up the transmittance of light so it shouldn't matter anything uh and she, with she, the yeah. comfort and vision sorry yeah uh she also wants to know what was the refractive index given in your case number 1 polycarbonate lenses 1.598 Uh, Mr. Dhanaraju wants to know. Uh, again, he has complimented you on your amazing presentation. 
I don't. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. What are the points to note while upgrading from conventional progressive to freedom progressive lenses in low refractive index, low refractive error? Sorry. What are the points to be considered? Mm -hmm. Well, when we're talking about freeform lenses, there are a lot of parameters that have to be paid attention to. When you're going in from a basic progressive to free form without even paying much attention to these, the benefits these people would get is the corridor width. When I say corridor width, it is at the periphery of the corridor, which is so soft that the person doesn't actually experience any distortions. So if he's looking through the corridor, he doesn't experience much because it's so soft. Second thing is, uh, freeform lenses also pay a little bit of attention to the, uh, the wavy effect that's caused by the prisms, induced prisms around in the segment or the near vision zone areas. That is being addressed more appropriately in freeform lenses. And uh, you will have to provide certain details for a freeform processing. That's one is your vertex distance. Second would be your wrap, which plays a major role. And third again is your pantoscopic tilt. These are three important points that you'll have to consider when you're giving the person a free form design of progressive spectacles. I hope that answers the question. I'm willing to wait if you can type back with any other doubts that you have in your mind. Uh, Ajay, the earlier question of Mr. Devaka, I think he is satisfied with your answer. Okay. There's Thanks. another question from Mr. Navneet Sharma from Chandigarh. Mm -hmm. He has again complimented on a wonderful session and he wants to know in case number one, is yes. it better to go for progressive addition lens than the bifocal glasses? Yes. Progressives are definitely, supposing the person says, I'm willing to go in for a progressive. As I had specified here again, please be, do pay attention to the person's occupation. Now, this particular person was a marketing executive. If I go back there, yeah, he was a marketing executive and we had given him a polycarbonate lenses since he had opted for a rimless pair of glasses. Please do pay attention to one thing is the occupation and the person's lifestyle. Progressive lenses definitely will solve his problem because, and if it is a free form, it's all the more reason for him to get taken all the benefits because freeform lenses do take in both the right prescription and the left prescription into consideration and induce the prismatic. Let's say uh, they will induce the prismatic effect, which we would have got it as a slab of procedures, which we used to do earlier for bifocals or something called as the prism thinning type of uh, prescriptions, which will be induced by default on their software and progressive lenses. If it is a free form one will definitely be addressed in such cases. And he's gonna be extra comfortable with progressives. Or you'll also have to consider monovision spectacles. I don't see many people actually consider monovision spectacles in, in their practices. I don't know why, but I have done it. If I can give it in the form of uh, contact lenses for monovision, I do even prescribe these monovision spectacles quite a number actually, depending on their profession. Yep. Is there any Thank more you, questions? Ajay. <clears throat> There's a question from Mr. Hari Sri. He wants yes. to know why blue coated lenses are not helpful in, for design professionals. It is because if you were to take uh, a blue protect lenses, you're probably reflecting out from the anti-reflection coating layer or the material property. You're slightly reflecting out the blue portion of the visible spectrum, which induces a slight bit of a change in the colors. So if you're taking away a little bit of blue and you're in, pushing in a little yellowishness, on a white paper itself. 
so what it what may happen is when you're checking even on colors there could be a small portion of the blue light which is getting absorbed away and you're trying to match it in a different combination which you may not have uh, goofed up if it was without the blue protect lenses i hope that answers if you're taking away a little bit of your blue light from the entire visible spectrum i think the blue protect lenses block in from 415 nanometer length to 455 so the color matching would also be a little bit off so that is why this gentleman who was actually into this profession had a slight bit of a difficulty matching certain colors okay there's a question from ms srividya she wants to know she wants you to elaborate more on base curve changes in spectacles well i think uh, we'll have to go back again completely to the best form design that we've all spoken about as students or in optometric optics best form design lenses are lenses which will reduce the aberrations to the maximum and especially if a person is wearing a, a toric lenses best form lens design plays a major role in comforting the eye there are no aberrations that come up i don't think i can actually explain with just simple words on this but i can definitely probably give her sri vidya some reading material if if somebody can share my email id with her and i can yeah. share some presentations about the best form lens design and the base curves associated with that thank you very much so sri vidya we will if you can share your email id we will uh, share the information that ajay provides us now there's a question from mr navneet sharma again yes he wants to and pal or bifocal design is a size and shape of the frame does it matter does it play a role size and shape yes it does aviator shapes are a big no when it comes to progressives but i know these guys can still manage with the free form lenses the present generation of uh, processing the lenses they're still able to manage much better than what uh, earlier designs of progressive lenses which we had uh, yes it does matter besides the aviator shapes the ovals or the rectangular ones is absolutely the best that you could probably suggest the round ones or the aviators are with a little hesitation you need to take a look as how well it fits the pantoscopic angle of these fitting of these spectacles and then take a call but if you give these features saying that this is how the person to wants his glasses i'm sure with the free form technology of processing the progressives uh they can do a much better job but don't say no this is not possible in an aviator model today it's just that you will have to probably provide these details to the laboratory and i'm sure they can process a fairly good design progressives for this person as well i think we are getting many more questions the next one is from mrs aparna mm -hmm. complimenting you on your great presentation and uh, she wants to know the things that need to be kept in mind while dispensing glasses in case of prescriptions with unequal ads come again on that first part unequal ads understood uh she wants to know what you have to keep in mind while dispensing glasses with unequal ads i don't think there's any special uh, thought one has to give with regards to unequal ads if at all you have to do a little bit of work work up you might have to probably just see what range you're looking at uh most often unequal ads are given for people who are sort of fakeic in one eye and just normal fake here in the other eye where you'll have to probably give it a thought in terms of the the range you're likely to work with but as an optician if you've got a prescription in your hand 
I don't think you have to pay much attention to the unequal ads and why that has been given. I think the, the procedure that you need to follow is absolutely the same, especially if you're giving bifocals. Okay, there's a question from Mr. Basant Yadav. In case number one, an isometropia says so the visual acuity was 6.6, but maybe untolerated, then power reduced to manage ghosting image. Power reduced in the sense, I didn't get that question right, but if I have to, are you trying to say reduce power in only one eye or in both the eyes? If you're doing it in one eye, then it becomes more like a monovision procedure. And if you're doing it in both the eyes, you're under correcting the person. Well, that is a question, so I don't understand much. So if you can, uh, Mr. Vasant, if you can uh, elaborate on your questions, uh, Ajay will be able to answer that better. We go to the next question. This is from Mrs. Devakani again. Mm -hmm. Now she says the same prescription, but changing to a new frame, say from round to rectangular shape, what should the patient or customer expect in terms of adaptation or other tips? So she has seen uh, people unhappy with new frames. That is with progressives or is it the first case? I suppose so. If, because she's expressing it this way, I guess I will take it as for a progressive from a round frame to a rectangle frame. I don't see a, any um, reason for discomfort. As long as these are uh, fitted appropriately, I don't see a reason for a discomfort at all. If it is a high minus, then the thickness is the only factor that uh, you will see it more in the rectangle. The edge thickness is going to be a little bit more and more prominent. So the person may show some amount of dissatisfaction, but with regards to vision, I don't think uh, it should matter much. If it is precisely fitted, no reason for him to complain. You might have to check with regards to the alignment, with regards to pantoscopic tilt, the wrap, but not because of the shape. Thanks, Ajit. There's a question from Mr. Agnya Dev, who has complimented you again for your wonderful presentation. He wants to know your opinion on eyes and dual optimal lenses. Eyes and lenses. Mm -hmm. Eyes and lenses are fairly good. I know it's, it's the very simple or earliest design with a very small difference from the distance portion to the near vision area. It's about 0.48 difference from the distance to near. It is, it's a kind of progressive lens design, but the intermediate zone does not really show up so much of uh, distortions, which would have been induced because of your cylindrical aspects or your prism changes that occur. It's so subtle that it doesn't really bother them much. But to people who I have dispensed eyes and lenses, not that every person have been very happy, especially if the person is going to be People who have come back to me, I'll tell you, is uh, the people who have said, I find this very uncomfortable or not very clear when I'm trying to read or watch television in a reclining position. But that problem, I didn't have it with my previous glasses because there is a difference in the lower zone of about 0.48. That's more of uh, a plus 0.48. So he is not going to be very happy, but people who are working on laptops definitely express themselves to be more comfortable because you are giving a little, say it's about a 0.5 diopter addition, and it gives them that extra comfort in relaxing their accommodation to some extent. That's the benefit that I look at. So I generally prescribe eyes and lenses to a, a pre-press bio anywhere around 35 to 40. And these guys actually uh, benefit in a way when we are upgrading them at the age of about 40, 40 plus, 
they easily adapt to progressive lenses that's that's my take and that's my experience on this ajay mr srivithya wants to know about the patient you mentioned that uh, prescribe monovision spectacle considering his occupation so yes. she wants to know if that should be prescribed only for office work or otherwise too if he is comfortable otherwise too uh like like in this particular slide which i have left it open cashier in the bank uh this person would definitely like to see distance clearly as well as near and if he is comfortable going around with these monovision spectacles it's absolutely fine it need not be just for his workplace so there are people who like it this way for only for workplace and if the person has to drive back and he says i'm not so comfortable i prefer my distance vision glasses only for my driving around it's absolutely fine because we, we know in such case the person can just lift off his glasses if at all he has to read anything which is small but if he is a hypero then you might have to probably consider again giving this person a progressive rather than a mono monovision spectacles you'll have to take a call depending on his demands but if he is comfortable with monovision spectacles please go ahead with the same confidence that you would have given monovision contacts mr shiva wants to know about the results of fire that you mentioned in case number 2 yes what is it crisal safar is an advanced uh, coating with especially with regards to the scratch resistance coating and another slight booster of another 0.5% of transmittance the benefits of a crisal safar over a crisal uva40 is an additional 0.5% increased transmittance and better scratch resistance coating okay uh miss navya has complimented you on a great presentation and you, navya wants to know how did you change the base curve for the case and uh, which base curve should be given that is the second case mm -hmm. uh well the the base curve that was on her glasses was 3 when i checked with my lens uh lens gauge the geneva lens measure i remember having checked it and it was a base curve of 3 on the front surface and this is exactly what i had to specify to the lab and i wanted it processed with a base curve of 3 similar to her 1.56 index and also in this case i retained the same uh, refractive index also i did not shift the refractive index i just shifted on the base curve saying a 1.56 and process it and do it with the anti reflection coating and give it back to us it worked i just am on to that description are you mr this is, this is what it is so the base curve from the first design for this one 1.56 processed and it was a titus lens the second one was 1.6 that was dispensed elsewhere and i had to put her back again onto a 1.56 with an anti reflection coating of crisal sapphire but it was processed again with a base curve of 3 and that's what i had to specify to the laboratory they would be able to process it thank you ajay mr rakesh yadav wants to know that in case number 2 you mentioned arc could be the reason for her eye strain so he wants to know how arc could lead to eye strain no this is this is just what may be the problem was it a centration issue was it because of the anti reflection coating now the thought behind this was is there too much light getting into the eye which is causing a little bit of a discomfort is it too bright and too clear so some people when you suddenly provide them uh, it's like a person who has immature cataract and then you happen to uh, remove off his mildly cataractous lenses and put in an absolutely 
clear lens, an IOL in the eye. So the kind of jarring effect that the person experiences, is that what she was expressing? So that's why this question, what may be the problem? Was it the centration issue or was it the ARC? Or of course, go on, on to with a few more options there. Okay. I hope that answers the question. Uh, Mr. Rakesh, if you have any more questions, please do ask. I think he has one more. I'll just read it out to you. But uh, Mr. Dhanaraju, in the meantime, wants to know about anti-fatigue lenses. Anti-fatigue lenses and Eisen lenses are absolutely the same. They, as I uh, described just a little earlier about a slight change in the, the power from the distance portion to the lower portion of the lens with a difference of about 0.48. They had actually thought of bringing in two options, 0.48 addition, and the other one was 0.67. Antifatigue lenses are absolutely the same as Eisen lenses. Yeah, Mr. Rahul Gundecha has one more question. He wants to know about the monovision spectacles. What is the difference in power range? Do you recommend it for minus two for distance? And I think D, he said D is, I suppose, it's distance and plus 150 near? No, I didn't get that question. Is he referring to the first case? He has not mentioned that. What is the difference? What will be the difference in power range? Do you recommend it for minus 2 for DS and plus 1.5 near? That's what it reads. Mm, I haven't understood his question very well, but just trying to consider if I have to take that one, which has a minus 150 spherical and a minus four. But for this case, the ad given was 1.75. So from a minus four, if he has to take off another 1.75, that is what he could probably consider for his left eye of this patient, or even probably a 0.25 less and just give him let's say a minus 250 spherical on the left eye and a minus 150 spherical on the right eye, the person would do fairly well. He's going to be quite comfortable. But okay, Mr. Howell, in, if in, can... sorry, sorry, sorry. In this case, I would not recommend a person saying, just leave no lens that is minus 1.5. He doesn't prescribe anything for the right eye and just gives a minus four correction. Now that is creating too much of a difference between the two eyes. Even so, again, the person's not going to be very comfortable. But if a person gives a 1.5 on the right eye and just a minus 2.5 on the left eye, he is the person who's going to be more comfortable than no correction on the right eye and minus four on the left eye. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think uh, if uh, we can request Mr. Rahul to provide a little more clarity in your question, we may be able to answer better. Uh, Mr. Rakesh Yadav, uh, he wants to know how does the lack of ARC in lens lead to eye strain? Again, I think he's asking the same thing what you just answered, but then uh, he wants to know that. Lack of ARC leading to eye strain. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has much relevance. It's only the transmittance of light. Anti-reflection coating is only boosting the transmittance of light. Uh, eye strain if a person is, see there are different uh, ways people do expre express their discomfort and the one of those common words used is eye strain. Uh, especially night vision, the person has a little drop in the clarity when the person has no anti-reflection coating. So he may come back and expre express saying that there is an I strain and I can't see very well. I have to squint my eyes a little bit more. It could be only because of the transmittance of light. But theoretically, if you try to reason it out, I don't see a reason why there should be eye strain just because of the anti-reflection coating missing on this lens surface. Okay, Mr. Rahul Gundeja has given a clarification. Now I understand his question. What he's talking about is positive lens in one eye and negative in the other. So he's talking about, let's say, right eye, he, a person has a minus two 
and left mm -hmm. eye he has a plus 150 okay so for monovision spectacles he wants to know the power difference uh, the difference in the powers which would be acceptable please take uh, this case a minus 2 for the right eye and a plus 150 for the left eye in such a case i would make use of his myopia for the right eye and give him nothing on the right eye and just give him a plus 150 spherical on the left so he's using his right eye for near and left eye for distance with a complete correction and you're narrowing down the difference between the two eyes. You're bringing it more towards zero for the right and only a plus 150 is for equal for the left. Otherwise the antimetropia would have been quite a bit. Would you not like to give uh, minus two for distance and nothing for near? Minus two for distance. distance. So you see the prescription what he's looking at is uh, minus two for distance and plus 150 for near. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I understood as antimetropia. Sorry. Okay. Minus two for distance and plus 150 for addition near. is 150. I and is 150. Assume, yeah, I assume so. Okay. Minus two for distance and add 150. I would probably just once again, just give him more. He can alter, alternate between the two and just say minus two spherical in either of the eye. Mm -hmm. He can keep switching between right and left. One day he can put on to the right and the other eye he can put on the next day with the minus two. So he can alternate or just see which is the dominant eye and give the dominant eye a complete correction for distance and no correction for the other eye. Yep. I would not recommend a plus 0.5 for the, the other eye. Yep. Or just a minus 0.5 for the other eye. I would not. Try to make things as simple as possible for the, the patient. Unless, of course, his okay. occupation or profession demands. Ms. Srivadya wants to know in case number one, how to arrive at the final monovision correction if the patient is a professional? Uh, what profession would that be? Anything specified? No. Okay. Uh, considering that the person would want it precisely at a, a specific distance, you'll have to calculate at what distance he needs his near vision correction. And accordingly work on only his left eye rather than on the left right eye, because his right eye correction is minus 150 spherical. Leave it with the same power as far as possible. Uh, play around with his left eye correction, depending on the profession at what distance he would like his correction to be at. If it is going to be roughly at around 70 to 80 centimeters away, calculate accordingly and then prescribe the ad required. Uh, she again wants to know about the anti-fatigue lenses, which you have already answered. But then another part of her question is, what is the success rate that you have observed? Uh, Success rate, we don't have people. See, the, 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 the speed at which these guys adapt to these anti-fatigue lenses, it's either a no or a yes within the first two days itself. The person comes back and says, yes, it's fabulous. I have had no problem. And success rate, when you actually give them these lenses, telling them it is designed only for people who are using laptop extensively, people have appreciated a lot of benefits. The success rate is almost about 95 to 98%. It's very, very few people who actually come back and say, I'm not comfortable with this pair of glasses. It's only those people who have come back is a person who is in the habit of reclining when, and raising his chin when he's driving. And the sec one more case is a person reclining when watching television. These are the only two odd cases that I've had who have rejected them saying that, my distance vision gets a little blurred. But for straight gaze, it's absolutely no problem at all. Ajay, Mr. Uh, Ms. Deepthi has complimented you on a very informative presentation. And uh, she wants to know if you can change the inset in free form progressives. Yes, you can see and change the inset and Actually, the insets that are calculated are by 
uh, by default, the advanced progressive lenses and then the freeform lenses, depending on the ad power, the inset is uh, designed because the front surface is already finished. So the inset, if it's a higher ad, the inset is going to be a little bit more from instead of a, a two mm inset, it could go up to about two and a half mm inset. And if you still wish to increase the inset, yes, an instruction to the laboratory can increase the inset uh, for a free form progressive lens design. It is possible to do so. I am Ms. Artina from Bangladesh. Yep. Has complimented you on your uh, great informative presentation. Thank you, sir. She wants to know can we incorporate oh. tint if ARC can cause eye strain? Will it help? If? If the ARC is causing an eye strain, will the tint help? Tinting of lenses, will it help? If, again, if, if you're sure that the eye strain is being caused due to photophobia, that is excessive light getting in into the eye, Yes, the tint will definitely give a lot of relief. Anti-reflection coating, as I have been trying to stress upon, is only increasing the transmittance of light through the lens or across the lens, getting on into the eye. The small advantage of an anti-reflection coating, again, is the rays of light passing through the lens go a little bit more organized. So the scattering actually comes down. Uh, as I said, there is no reason for ARC to cause eye strain, but if it is because of excess light, then a tint should help. Yes. Thanks, Ajay. <clears throat> Mr. Rakesh Yadav has a very interesting uh, question. Mm -hmm. He wants to know if Eisen lenses could lead to early age presbyopia as a lenses has uh, plus power similar to a progressive addition lens. Yes, that's a very interesting question. And usually I would, I am of the belief that yes, it does. When you kind of support your accommodative muscles to relax a bit, you are kind of supporting the eye to move more towards early press biopic changes. And let's say for some reason, if a person changes, uh, uh, the design of lens from an eyes end. He goes to another optician and he goes back and he gets another pair of glasses only for his distance correction. What we have seen is the person comes back and says, these glasses, which I made elsewhere, are not as comfortable for my near vision work as what you have given me. So that is one of those indicators that tell us that you are pushing the person to get press biopic a little bit earlier than he would have otherwise probably gone in. So in such cases, I do encourage a person to, with some eye exercises to improve on his accommodative facility, just give him some simple exercises and tell him, keep doing this just to give a little bit or just to delay your press biopic symptoms a little bit longer. But yes, I have seen this. Yes, sir. Yadav, this is a nice question and I have actually seen such changes. There's another interesting question from Mr. Dilip Kulkarni from Bangalore. He wants you to explain how to take PD measurements for dispensing of progressive addition lenses for an alternating exotrope. Do one eye at a time you will have to probably close one of his eye and then check, supposing you're taking the PD marking for the right eye, your left eye is gonna be open and make sure you mark on the right eye. And then when you have to examine or take the PD measurement for his left eye, block his right eye and then ask him to look at your right eye and mark the uh, centration or the fixation cross point on 
the demonstration lens of his left eye or for his left eye so you have to block the fellow eye and make him look straight so the question now arises uh if he is an exotrope one of the alternating exotrope or an exotrope if he's suppressing one of the eye that means he is not really putting that eye to use at the time of reading but for some reason if his dominant eye is blocked then the the non dominant eye will be uh, use or will be uh, seeing through the reading zone of his progressive lenses that you have prescribed with of course the convergence so there is going to be an inset also there is no uh, turning of the lenses i hope that answers your question dilip so i just uh, just a little curious up to how much of exotropia would you like to give a progressive now if the non dominant eye is deviating let's say about a good 30 degrees i think you can still dispense a progressive if it's 45 i think that eye is suppressing quite a bit mm -hmm. up to about 30 degrees i would say I, i'm quite confident that i can give it because when for some reason if you're trying to force that eye into seeing through the near vision zone uh, i think you can prescribe a progressive to this person so you say up to 60 prisms of exotropia is fine is it possible as long if are we are we considering this as an alternating exotrope uh well that's a question alternating exotropia that's a question from dilip yes yeah. yes you can if up to 60 prism is fine 30 okay. degrees should be okay i see one more question from ms kavita again complimenting you for the great knowledge that you have provided she wants to know if change in inset for free from progressive addition lenses can cause any reading troubles for previous progressive user if we increase the inset for free from progressive yes. lenses yes will it cause any reading problems for a previous progressive user of conventional design absolutely no the person is going to be appreciating it a lot more if you were to give the person a free form lens design the comfort level just boosts up quite a bit well at this point i know i have had very odd cases who have preferred the conventional design over a free form lens design i cannot reason it out but yes we do have a few cases because theoretically we cannot prove the free form is any way inferior we can only prove it to be a far more superior lens design but there are a few cases one odd case i would say maybe about 2% of the population who will still prefer the conventional lens design especially the the hard designs the older generation lenses the hard design lenses are more preferred as compared to the free form lens design neither the experts have been able to answer this why and i can say from my side i am unable to explain that as well but yes there are cases of that type okay ajay ms kajal fatnani wants to know does short corridor or long corridor progressive matter with regard to comfort while prescribing glasses to women who is a housewife and she is a first time wearer uh okay and again depends on the reading habits but if a person who is a first time wearer a housewife doing a lot of household activities i would still like to suggest a person with a longer corridor so that the intermediate corridor width is a little wider and the person is able to adapt with ease but the present generation of lenses today especially the free form ones if at all we have to consider that 
you can adjust the height of the corridor depending on the frame the person chooses but if the frame size is pretty large and you're still going back to the conventional design then a lengthier corridor would definitely be better than a shorter corridor for considering the household activities if the person is using it only at the time of reading then i would still suggest a short corridor works better um husna sagir wants you to elaborate on base curve now that's a huge chapter <laughs> but yeah without uh, exactly uh without a lot of charts and i don't have it in this right now but without a lot of diagrams and charts i cannot really specify too much on just the base curve yes it can i can take a class on base curve for almost about <laughs> an hour plus it's a huge chapter but i can so, yeah. share some of the slides and uh, presentations that i have taken for certain classes if you could probably check with me on my email i will share that presentation with you sure if you can uh, write to mr ajay he'll be able to provide you more information on that i think i have the last question from mr hari sri how we can find out free from technology progressive design and any instrument that helps us measure it no instruments to help us measure that absolutely no the only thing that you could probably uh, get an idea is through a slightly higher prescriptions if at all you ordered for uh, a free form design you can figure it out through setting your lens meter to evaluate with a 0.06 diopter precision and then check the powers you will have a slight variation for let's say if you have a minus 4 diopter spherical that you have prescribed for distance and a uh, two addition for near let's say you you calibrate your lens meter for a 0.06 diopters and try to evaluate at the distance vision portion if you get a small difference of something like 3.87 3.9 or i'm sorry uh 3.87 3.92 instead of a minus 4 then it gives you a clue that this has been designed or processed based on the other parameters that you have provided to the person such as the vertex distance your wrap and pantoscopic tilts so it will give you an idea about has this guy actually processed it that way but if you set your settings on the lens meter to let's say a 0.25 that's something that you cannot pick up it will it will still show you a minus 4 i hope you are able to understand what i'm expressing in this thank you ajay thanks for a fantastic talk and a lot of good discussion that we had yeah thank now, you adi a comment which i was holding for a while now i think this is the best comment and you'll cherish it the comment says good talk and this happens to be from your better half <laughs> says lakshmi shinde and i think i know only one and only one lakshmi shinde who happens to be your better half all right my dear mate <laughs> thank you very much thank you okay. one and all thanks ajay thanks again and uh, thank you for all your questions we have enjoyed it thoroughly we yes, meet I you tomorrow yes i enjoyed it too yes we see you tomorrow again on the same channel same time and tomorrow we have mr devaka who will be talking about prescribing prisms so prescribing prism which has been a big topic and you have been waiting for a long time on how to prescribe prisms for people with phoria and how to prescribe prisms for people with tropias so mr devakar rao will uh, set your doubts to rest tomorrow so we see you tomorrow same channel same time stay safe stay happy thank you all right thank you everyone